how to uh, use APE to analyze the PCR product and uh, how to find out the uh, restriction enzyme going to cut the PCR fragment between the wild type and the mutant. So uh, plus the zipped plasmid DNA and uh, the wild type sequence are all there, uh, right underneath the assignment. Uh, after you download the sequence, you need to uh, extract all the sequences before you can use them. And your enzyme uh, for each group is also listed in a, a file. And the primer is also listed there, and uh, forward primer and backward primer. So after you download the sequence extract file, you should find out the mutant you are working on. And in any case, the wild type is the one you are going to use for all group. So I'm opening up the wild type sequences using APE. All right, that's the wild type. And then I'm going to pick a mutant sequence. Uh, for no particular reason, I'm going to pick AG33. Uh, all right, so let me go to the wild type first. And then the question is, I want to find out uh, using the set of a primer we, we just set up given to us, we want to find out what's the PCR product going to be. Remember this is a plasmid, so this is circular. Make sure both the wild type and circular. And then I go back to Moodle, found out that the first, that's the forward primer. So make, I'm going to highlight all the forward primer sequences and copy it. This is basically in the web browser I copied. Go back to APE, go to edit, and then say find. And then I just pasted it here. Oh, uh, I don't see paste, but I know the shortcut of paste. Uh, paste it. There, I TGTCCAA. Uh, double check that's the case. TGTCCAA. Okay, that's correct. And by default, it also uh, not only search for sense direction, it also search for reverse complement direction. So find there, you will fi it found the sequence. And you want to double check whether this is a sense direction or anti-sense direction. So this is TGTCCAA, and you look at the bottom, TGTCCAA. It looks like this is a sense direction. So I'm uh, to, but I'm going to label this on the plasma as a feature. So I close this, and then goes to the menu, there's a features. I click new features. There, you, you see at the bottom it's light up. TGT, that's the primer. Make sure that's the primer we are going to, that's where the primer uh, are going to uh, label. So this is MSH2 forward F. And this is a sense direction. Uh, I'm going to make the primer uh, looks the arrow much larger. So I put a 10 there. Okay, and if you want to see what that means, you, you can go back to the graph. You see there, that's the very large arrow I just put in. That's uh, my forward primer. So, okay, now I'm going to find out the, the, the primer on the reverse complementary strain. So again, I select everything here, go to edit, copy again, TCAA, CCA. Go back to APE, go to edit, find, paste. Double check this, TCAA, CCA, that's correct. Find next, there. It found out uh, there at, uh, at, at this, at the bottom you see that, that's the reverse uh, complement of strength. Now this time if you look for the sequence TCAA, CCA, I don't see it, it starts with GG, TGT, and then if you like, that's actually is the end of this primer. So this primer is at the reverse complementary strain. So now I close that window, go back to feature, new feature. There, it's highlighted there. But this time, I'm going to click this box, REV hyphen COM for reverse complement. So once I click that, you see the color become green. And then you look at the bottom, this part you see the forward color is 
is uh, Spelman blue, the reverse color is, is green. So there, you see that that's our forward primer in blue, and that's our reverse primer in green. So I'm going to call this MSH2R uh, reverse primer. And again, I'm going to make sure the arrow is pretty obvious there. Then I look at the graph again there. So how big is the PCR product going to be? So I, I'm going to write it down. So one position is 5650 to 562A. The other one is 4768 to 4791A. You can calculate this on your own. Um, but in any sense, uh, basically you have a reverse primer and forward primer. Oh, uh, basically the plasmid is in a clockwise direction. That's the the plasma goes this direction, so the forward primer goes this direction, reverse prime goes this direction. Uh, look, let's say the MSH2 is also in a uh, clockwise direction. Okay. And so the PCR going to amplify the fragment just between these two arrows. And you can calculate the, the size of this fragment. And basically it's uh, uh, 562A minus 47 something. So this is about 800 something, and if you if you are not sure, you can we just uh, write down the sequence goes back to the sequence window. You can highlight all the sequence between the two primer. Right? So there, so I just highlight the sequence start from 4768 and ended at a 5650, and the length is 883. Now there, that's the your PCR product size. So this this pair of primer gave you 883 base pair products. Now the question also asks you if I use a restriction enzyme cut, what do we see between a wild type and mutant? So I'm going to uh, say copy this. Remember, oh, I'm actually analyzed the mutant. Uh, so make sure uh, you remember. Uh, which sequence you, an, uh, you you have analyzed. So uh, then I say new, copy paste. This this time I'm going to save this new. This is a PCR product from the mutant AG33. So I'm going to save this sequence as AG33 PCR. And this is MSH2 forward and reverse primer by because uh, in this case we just have one set of primer sometimes in your experiment you may have multiple set of primer so you put a primer there you know what it, uh, what it is okay there and then I'm going to do the same thing but remember this is uh, uh, remember this 4768 to 5650 I go back to the wild type plasmid I don't have to do every everything again I just select that's what's the sequence again it's uh, five six five zero two four seven sixty eight is that the same thing uh, yeah, five seven sixty eight two five six five zero length is eight hundred eighty three okay so make sure we pick the same thing all right so but oh it doesn't matter uh, as long as you pick the right fragment yeah sorry okay. uh, it's 883 yeah. yeah so then uh, I say copy and then paste yeah. so this is also a 800 uh, and 83 bit, but this time I'm going to save it as the this is wild type, wild type MSH2. Oh, uh, MSH2 should be a cap, uh, uppercase, since it's wild type, and this is the forward reverse and the reverse PCR product. PCR product, okay. So then, uh, 
I'm going to minimize the the plasmid and just look at the the, <coughs> the two P PCR products. So AG33, I'm going to go back to Moodle to look for the enzyme. AG33 is a BMR1. Remember this BMR1 enzyme. I, I need to find this enzyme, cut this to a uh, plasmid fragment using APE. Now, that's, that enzyme is not a very common enzyme. If you go back to the APE default, you don't see it. B, A, B, C then you have trouble but the the good thing is if you click the enzyme site you see the enzyme new enzyme there's a file say open new enzyme file and uh, we open that this is a bit slow but right so then that's the default, uh, that's the enzyme uh, file folder for the APE. And if you look at the file, there is a file called absolutely all enzymes. Pick that file because the, that, that one has many, many enzyme lists there. Open. There, this time you, we should look for BMR1 again. BS, yes, 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 BV. BMR1. There, that's BMR1. Now the trouble is, I see BMR10. So this one doesn't cut it. Doesn't cut wild type. So this no, this enzyme does not cut wild type. So I don't have to. Even if I do a digest, it actually one band 883. This one doesn't cut wild type. Now I go to the mutant. Do the same thing again. Uh, double check. BMI. This time I see the mutant cut it once. So basically I do the PCR on both wild type and mutant. I cut with this enzyme BMR1. It's going to cut the mutant or the wild type. That's how we can see which one is which. And I do a digest on the mutant PCR plot there. It shows there is a cut of BMR1 at 617 position. And then I'm going to see two band. One band has a 267 base pair size. The other band is about 616 size on the gel. And if we use the 1 kb ladder, uh, that's probably not 1 kb ladder. Anyhow, if we uh, on the agarose gel, we should see a two, uh, a one band 267, the other band 616. That's the and that's how we know uh, using a restricted enzyme to distinguish a mutant from wild type. Okay, I hope it's helpful.